Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for the MediaSpeaks.com, and we are going to uh, charge right into the news that we have for the day. Uh, this is from PrisonPlanet.com. Jim Rogers, government will confiscate your assets. Now, I have said for as long as anybody would listen to me that the absolute worst thing you can do is to bank. I have said it, and I stand by it. Do I bank? No, I absolutely do not bank at all. Uh, how can you live without banks? What do you do if you need to uh, cash your work check, or what if you have direct deposit? How do you get around it then? Mediaspeaks.com. Look up how to live without banks. Uh, one of the most popular things I've ever written, and you will find it useful, especially if you're listening to what I'm about to tell you now. Chris Waltzik from Gold Seek Radio interviews worldwide money master Jim Rogers from his home in Singapore. Rogers outlines his plans to increase his precious metal stockpile in the next year or two. That is to say gold, silver, platinum. As signs of capitulation appear, he says that no nation as deeply indebted as the U.S. has ever, that would be historically ever, successfully extricated itself from the inevitable currency crisis that followed and related repercussions. What does that mean? It means that never in history, never, not, oh, but what about the what? Never has any country or nation or empire that is as deeply entrenched in debt as we are, never have they escaped a collapse. And the way to escape getting absolutely hosed in that is to not bank and just to invest in precious metals and stay out of the stock market. Jim recommends contingency plans in preparation for imminent currency controls and bank account bail-ins to reduce exposure to savings confiscation. What's that mean? It means that our banking system is going to take your money. Are you listening to this? Your money. It's going to take it from you as a bail-in or a haircut or whatever the name they want to give it this week is. They're going to take your money and they're going to use it to pay off whatever debt is needed for the good of everyone. And the way to get around that is to not be in their institutions uh, such as banks. Roger's personal market strategy, it says, is simple. Most of the time, do nothing. He says most of the time he is waiting waiting for opportunities, or waiting for them to mature. He cautions investors to be very careful and to hold assets outside of the U.S. banking system. Roger also discusses the geopolitical situation and why he is now investing in Russia. He states that if the USG goes to war with Russia, he will be buying gold at $1,600 and up from there. So friends, it's as clear as can be. The writing is on the wall. Everyone, I don't think I was like the first person on this, now everyone is saying that if you're trusting banks and you're trusting institutions, then you are going to get stolen from, get into precious metals, and get into assets that you can physically hold and nobody can ever prove that you have. You go to howtolivewithoutbanks.com, people. The right, I just gave you the source. The writing is on the wall. Again, go and look up how to get around this. And it's a very short article. In the case you wonder if I'm selling something, no, there's nothing for sale in the whole article. Infowars.com. Video border patrol attempt to seize phone from libertarian filming inland checkpoint. For those of you that don't know what an inland checkpoint is, the government is trying to say that if you live within 100 miles of any border, which envelops millions of people, then you don't have the same rights as everybody else in the country for the sake of safety. That's not constitutional. That's not going to hold up in the long run. But unfortunately, as Paul Joseph Watson and uh, Alex Jones here, AJ and PJ Dub, point out, in the short term, it could be bad. And uh, we're going to get to it. Actually, I gave the wrong byline. This is Steve Watson. The next one is Paul Joseph uh, Watson and Alex Jones. 
A video that surfaced over the weekend shows Border Patrol agents close to El Paso, Texas, attempting to seize a libertarian activist's phone as he was videoing what he believed to be an unconstitutional checkpoint. He believed that because it was absolutely true, I might add. Radio host Tony Stiles captured the exchange as he and two colleagues were traveling to Florida from California for a public appearance. The journey did not involve a border crossing and again raises concerns over the legality of inland checkpoints. No, inland checkpoints are simply unconstitutional and you should film them at every turn, which is your constitutional right. And this has been upheld by the Supreme Court, so if the push comes to shove, you'll win. The agent captured on the video demanded that Stiles hand over the phone as he was exiting his vehicle, claiming, I don't know if it's a weapon, if it's a knife or a gun, Leave you, let me have your phone. Stiles refused to hand over the phone, as would I, replying, this is not happening. You know full well that this is not an effing weapon. You are effing kidding me. Stiles was already wound up by being ordered to get out of the vehicle by agents who vaguely cited probable cause. There is no probable cause to violate your rights. It's my authority. I'm not federal, one agent is heard saying. Get out of your vehicle. I'm confused as hell, Stiles replied, asking, have we broken any law? This is probable cause, and now you guys are just snowballing onto it, the agent replies. The agents claimed that a crime had alerted to the vehicle when the men finally agreed to exit the car. Stiles held onto the phone and filmed the subsequent, subsequent search. Thanks, thank God. It says the video, it says there are three were eventually, eventually arrested for marijuana possession as agents claimed they recovered a small quantity of the drug. Both men claim that they did not have any marijuana in the vehicle. They also say that the video shows one of the agents taking his hand out of his pocket and placing something in the bag that they are searching. Friends, they're going to win this. We already know that they're going to win this, but it's bigger than that. We are at a point now where we are going to have to do these kinds of things in mass, in growing numbers. We're going to have to not sit back and allow ourselves to be intimidated by these ridiculous things that the government is doing to us. If we don't stand up for ourselves, and if we don't genuinely fight back at this and refuse to capitulate to this, then there's not going to be anything that evil or even resembles our country for us to be in. And I'm not one of these people, we need to leave a better nation for our children. I'm worried about a better nation for us, okay? Our children, great. I'm, I don't want to live in hell either. So, um, we need to do this, friends. We need to keep doing what these brave people did. And you watch. I mean, the ACLU has dubbed the 100-mile area in which the checkpoints have been positioned as the Constitution-free zone. And it says two out of three Americans live within the buffer zone. 190 million people are said to live in this buffer zone. This is an excuse to intimidate you and to uh, break up the rights that you were born into. We will not let them take our garden-given rights from us, no matter what. Infowars.com, this is the byline I gave earlier. PJ Dub and AJ, Paul Joseph Watson, Alex Jones, the Internet has emerged as the most powerful and empowering tool of the individual freedom since the Gutenberg press. But it mentions that they are trying greatly to ruin it for us. And here are some ways that they are doing it. I'm not going to read all of this because nobody tunes in to sit here and watch me read, but you get the point. You can look up the article for yourself. The FCC recently gave the green light for large internet service providers to create a two-tier internet system which would allow large corporations to buy up dedicated faster bandwidth, ending the net neutrality and potentially leaving smaller websites in the dust. Or why does that matter? If MSNBC can give you lies on a faster bandwidth channel, then I'm able to give you the truth on a smaller bandwidth channel, or you will never find me. And if you do find me, it will take you forever to download my show while there's flies. Um, two, intelligence agencies are manipulating the internet with deliberate disinformation. And there's a link for this. Documents recently released, uh, released by a whistleblower, might I add, hero, Edward Snowden, 
confirm that Western intelligence agencies are deliberately flooding the web with disinformation in order to inject all sorts of false material onto the internet in order to destroy the reputation of its targets. In other, in other words, putting out deliberately fake information so that people soak it right up. Uh, again, how do you avoid that? If something seems questionable, I'll mention on my show, for instance, it seems a little odd. You might not want to buy this at face value. Here's what I read. And if you do that, it will completely eliminate their ability to do such things to you. Three, <clears throat> governments are paying tolls to sway public opinions. In 2010, it says, Canada's CTV News reported on how federal authorities were paying companies to correct misinformation on web forums. The Turkish, Israeli, and ever freedom-loving Chinese governments, along with a host of others, also have implemented similar programs. While the U.S. Air Force hired data security firm H.B. Gary to create large numbers of fake social media profiles that could be used to spread propaganda while, count while countering anti-U.S. rhetoric online. Raw Story reported another link. That the, Siri, that the obvious function of the program was to manipulate public opinion on key information, such as news reports, thereby creating the illusion of a consensus. In other words, making sure that everybody agrees on paper and that the news presents that everybody agrees even when they don't. A um, couple more here. Four mainstream news websites are killing comment sections. And I want to thank Alex Jones. Uh, Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com. I do a lot of link, uh, not spamming, somebody might say so. Uh, a lot of uh, link peppering all over those sites. Whenever I find a story that works in tandem with something that I reported on, then I'll go ahead and put it in their comment line. There are a lot of people that are stopping this, and the mainstream media is famous for doing this. Why? Uh, this is how they killed Ron Paul in Iowa. Um, this is also how you uh, prevent... But let's say they do an, uh, an article on global warming. The best way to stop people like me from putting the facts out there that prove that man-made global warming is a lie, the best way to do that is to not let me make a comment. So watch for it. Although this remains a relatively rare phenomenon, it says, increasing numbers of mainstream news websites are killing or severely restricting comment sections in order to drown out dissent voices that challenge the prevailing status quo. Uh, you'll find it on boingboing.net. Uh, the New York Times is said it's going to scale them back. Again, the New York Times is losing readers in mass. So, I mean, this was for this, we're only hasting that. But... In any event, watch for it. It's one of the ways that we uh, could be in trouble here. It says, five, the Obama administration's cognitive infiltration of the Internet. In 2010, the White House program was revealed that centered around infiltrating conspiracy groups in order to undermine them via postings on chat rooms and social networks. Uh, and this is easy. Uh, that's how they end up painting um, Rubio as a libertarian. That's how you hear about ridiculous things like that is the cognitive infiltration. What that means is basically lying to large numbers of people and clumping people together that are not together at all and doing so by creating dissent within chat rooms. A six, uh, false flag cybersecurity attacks as a pretext to increase web regulation. It says, while constantly repeating the necessity for restrictive cybersecurity regulations to be applied to the internet in the name of preventing cyber attacks, the United States has itself been behind all of the recent major cyber attacks. Uh, it mentions that the U.S. and Israel helped create Stuxnet. I, I don't. I'm going to dissent here a little myself. Uh, I'm not. I'm going to disagree with Infowars here. China has also done its own spying on us, as as Iran and North Korea. Not all viruses have been created by our government, but does that justify what we do? No, of course it doesn't. So watch for it. Seven, a fairness doctrine for the Internet. While working to end net neutrality, the FCC is also serving to facilitate the implementation of something akin to the fairness doctrine on the Internet. 
basically you have to give as much time to the lies as you do the truth in the name of fairness. Uh, there used to be something called the fairness doctrine here. Anytime you hear fairness doctrine from the government, what they mean is socialism, and it is anything other than fair. According to Tim Kavanaugh, under the plan entitled Multi-Market Study for Crucial Information Needs, and it's crucial, the airwaves regulator would subject news producers and all media to invasive questioning about their work and content, a move which could lead to policing political content on the web. Uh, due to shows like mine and people like you fighting, fortunately this seems to be on the back burner, but let's remember what they wanted to do, and of course they're going to try and do it again. We'll get back to that. On number 10. Uh, 8. Homeland Security's internet kill switch. While, fills, while fears excuse me, of a government kill switch for the internet have been mooted for years, under standard operating procedures 303 or SOP 303, you can look those up, the Department of Homeland Security has given itself the power to oversee the termination of private wireless network connections both within a localized area, such as a tunnel or a bridge, and within an entire metropolitan area in the event of an emergency. The trouble is, they define what emergency is. Uh, that's like when Adolf Hitler decided what an emergency was and promptly eliminated all other political groups other than National Socialists. Nine, there's two left. New taxes and regulations set to stifle communications and sales of the web. In other words, tax you out of using the internet or being able to sell something on it if you're not rich. A blizzard of new taxes and regulations could herald internet freedom's expiration date according to a recent Wall Street Journal piece, uh, hardly an underground rag, which points to two efforts by lawmakers to weaken the Internet Tax Freedom Act in order to punish all American consumers with new taxes on communication, simply talking to each other. Now, emails will be taxed like stamps. Do you like that? Do you like having to pay every time you text your girlfriend something kinky? Because if you don't, you should start listening to things that I'm saying here. That's why I'm speaking into a camera. It's what they want to happen to you. Lobbyists for giant retailers are leaning on Congress to empower some 9,600 state and local governments within more authority over e-commerce, e including a potential email tax which could dissuade millions of Americans from communicating online. That is why we need an, uh, an internet that is run by the people away from the power of the government to shut it down. And there are a lot of people who are much smarter than me who will be able to make this happen. Uh, 10. Uh, SOPA, CISPA, and FBI's internet backdoor, even though SOPA and CISPA are dead. Just remember what they wanted to do. And government has a tendency to bring back failed things later on under different names or as uh, Christmas trees hidden in... Um, Bills that have nothing to do with the internet. So this is the last one you're going to want to watch for, and I'm going to give it to you here. Legislative assaults under the banner of SOPA and CISPA, which were advanced in the name of stopping online copyright theft. Oh, and it's to stop them from listening to the new Motley Crue album. Yet were soundly defeated when it emerged that they were actually designed to impose oppressive censorship and surveillance on the internet and will continue to be advanced by those who seek to centralize power. Anytime you hear about the internet being centralized in any way, know automatically that you heard a show about that. Remember the correct views. Remember the long-haired guy speaking into the camera. And don't fall for it, people. And don't fall for it. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Um, do me a favor if you're in Canton, Ohio. Go to the Arcadia Grill, located in downtown Canton. Some of the best food that you will ever consume is food that you're going to eat there. They're, even if you're only an hour or two away, maybe you're in Cleveland, Akron, Cincinnati, come a few hours up. The Arcadia Grill, located on Court Avenue, get the ravioli. Let them know Sam I.B. sent you from the correct views. And uh, you'll never be happier with a meal, I can promise you that. Also, look up the work of Mike McLaughlin, one of the best... Uh, fiction writers extant today. You can find him on Facebook.com, Mike McLaughlin, uh, Archangel underscore Yahoo.com. When you look him up, let him know that you heard about him from the Correct Views show. And let him know that you want to buy some of his stories. He writes some of the best poetry, short stories, and uh, long fiction stories written today. And your chance to enjoy him is right now. So go there and let him know that I sent you. 
A few more stories to get to. A report says that 50% of people are conspiracy theorists, and you are probably one of them. If you're listening to this show, yeah, you're probably yeah, one of them. Congratulations. The point is, they call it anything a conspiracy. If I say that Christelle, the behind-the-scenes queen, is a North Korean agent, and she secretly wants to snuggle up to the butt cheeks of Kim Jong-un. And she put this bomb in this plant. And if I wiggle it too much, it's going to blow up. That's a conspiracy. There's no basis anywhere other than her love for Kim Jong-un's butt cheeks. No truth to it anywhere. But if I tell you that the government is spying on everything that you send and text and write on the internet, that is not a conspiracy. That is proven fact that the government doesn't like. And that's the kind of thing that they call a conspiracy. So, um, it says, oh, this is interesting here. It says, according to a JAMA study, that if you believe in these things, then uh, up to half the people can. It says, you are a conspiracy theorist. If you question things like, uh, do you believe cell phones uh, cause cancer and the government is refusing to act? Yes, I completely believe so. They're not labeled properly, they're barely labeled at all, and they're much more dangerous than you think. GMOs are being used for population control. If they're not being used for it, they're definitely uh, taking advantage of it. So yes, the government suppressing alternative medicine. Yes. Vaccinations causing autism. Of course, we've got amounts of data on this from everybody that's not tied into the system. HIV intentionally being sent to African American communities. Uh, I'd have to read more on it, but I, from what I see, yes. Um, it says nearly half, 49%, of the participants agreed with at least one of the theories. About 37% thought the government actively works to suppress alternative medicine treatments, and 20% believed that vac vaccinations call autism. And it says, uh, this is what this condescending prick says, for people that don't have a lot of education, it's relatively easy to reject the scientific way of thinking about things, said Oliver. The point is that if you start taking the supplements, such as a two emergency every day. You'll find that you almost never get sick. Add cinnamon and echinacea to it. The government says it doesn't work. I used to be sick nonstop. Now I'm never sick. The more I look into the naturopathic way of doing things, the healthier I am. I'm 41 years old and I took up snowboarding on the week of my 41st birthday. I'm fine. I'm looking forward to beating myself up and falling down a mountain again soon. They are wrong. Those of us that believe in good health practices are the ones who are right. And they don't want that happening because the healthier you are, the less money Big Pharma makes. Two more stories, friends. Uh, Chilean activist burns $500 million in student loan documents in protest against debt serfdom. This man isn't an activist. Uh, he's an absolute freaking hero. Uh, Liberty Blitzkrieg, Michael Krieger. I don't think I've ever wanted to kiss a man before. Um, why am I so in favor of this? Because the government lies. They promise you one rate on student loans. But then when you actually contact them to pay the rate that you were promised, you get hosed with a much higher rate that you can never pay off. Who might they have done that to me? Don't tell me it's a conspiracy theory. It's conspiracy fact. I'm living it. This story struck a particular chord with me, considering that my mother left Chile for the United States back in the early 70s after Salvador Allende was elected president. She was able to instinctively see the writing on the wall and got out ahead of the political chaos, military coup, and dictatorship that followed. Beyond my personal connection, it says, I find this to be a very important story in that it further highlights the fact that the current civil war slash civil unrest cycle is interconnected and a global phenomenon. Since the parasitic central bank driven financial system, that is to say the Fed, is more or less entrenched in every country on Earth, every country on Earth is experiencing increased concentration of wealth 
going into the pockets of a handful of oligarchs. Uh, meanwhile, those nations with hereto had a middle class are finding that this entire social economic class is disappearing into the dustbin of history. And it is happening because of many different things. Uh, it says the student loans, the uh, criminal qualities of student loans are pushing an entire generation, that would be me, into inescapable serfdom, while many university administrators are enriching themselves at the expense. They are raising the price of education, to put this into easy-to-understand terms, unbelievably high, so that the average student, uh, the average worker, uh, will have to pay for their son or daughter to take out an insane amount of money to go to school. Meanwhile, they'll never get that money paid back because our government has destroyed the economy via central banking and offshoring, outsourcing, NAFTA, and uh, we'll never get it paid back. Meanwhile, these bastards make twice as much off of raising the price and getting free government money. That's what it just said. And I agree with every word of it. it says that so it appears that a student loan uh, debt is based serfdom is also a major issue in Chile, and one activist known as Papas Fritas, who I love, one of the kiss, decided to take matters into his own hands. During a takeover at Universidad de Mar, he was able to get his hands on $500 million in student loan debt, which he subsequently torched, and it shows the pile of ashes. I didn't know I had the gay gene, but oh my, I guess I do. I'm kidding. Francisco Tapia, who is also known as Papa Fritas, claimed that he had freed the students by setting fire to the debt papers, or Pagres. It says, in the five-minute video, the artist and activist, and might I add, hero, translated by the Chilean news site Santiago, Santiago Times, he passionately is said to have said, you don't have to pay another peso for your student loan debt. We have to lose our fear, our fear of being thought of as criminals because we're poor. I'm just like you, living in a shitty life, and I live it day by day. This is my act of love for you. And it says the, student may actually, the school may actually have to stew this, sue these students to get the money. That man, God bless you, Papa Fritos. Um, the last thing I want to get to, the collegefix.com, Jennifer Caban, the dumdy of the day, the dumdy of the day is here, the dumdy of the day. Uh, what is the dumdy of the day? Um, regular viewers know I give the dunce cap of the month out at the uh, first week or so of every month, and it's a dunce cap and a special award that Christelle and I make up. And we send it to whoever is the dumbest news story that I happen to come across in any given month. I ended up with so many dumdies that I couldn't get to them all. And so what I've started doing now is the dumdy of the day. And this is who gets it today. Doesn't win the golden dumdy, the big dunce cap of the month award, but damn, it's close. <sighs> Hurts to, and I'm part Mexican, so don't, don't call me racist. Uh, Call me wet back, call me whatever you mean, 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 it means nothing, it's words grow up. All you can eat taco bars deemed offensive face campus extinction. Well, if you talk about tacos, I've got Mexican blood in me, I'm just gonna freak. What's wrong with you people? Use the thinking part of your brain by Shazarazad's hat. Every year across the nation, several Pi Beta Phi sorority chapters host all-you-can-eat P-Fiesta taco bar fundraisers at their respective campuses to raise money for charity. Well, if it's called Pi Fiesta, you would imply that it could also be racist against Greeks. I'm just reading what's in front of me. You work with what you got when you're doing the dumdy of the day. It says that long-standing tradition may be typically held around Cinco de Mayo, and it's in jeopardy. In the past few weeks, pressure from a handful of Latino students at high-profile universities complained the events were offensive and prompted changes to Phi Fiesta fundraisers. C. Loco in the S.A. Mexican scum, Latino trash, coming from me, part Latino, 
Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. Deganji are signing off and sticking up for free speech because no one else freaking does. Uh, thank you, friends, so much for watching. Good night, God bless, and whatever you do, go to themediaspeaks.com. Look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake, myself. We're posting all the time. We also meet Saturdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the live Saturday edition. And uh, if you want to donate to the show, you can do so at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Good night, friends. God bless.